Eugen Lutz first introduced the plunge router to woodworking in 1949. It was a great idea, but it had one big disadvantage. It won't work by pushing down on just one handle. It needs two hands to work it, which means that you don't have a free hand to check the depth of the cutter. This was so until we at Woodrat introduced the plunge bar all of 50 years later. Any plunge router can benefit from it, whether going freehand, squeeze it gently down, or in a router table. That, by the way, is the solution to your sticking your chin on the thing to hold it down while trying to verify the depth of the cutter. In the wood rat, it turns the push downwards on the work with two hands action into a simple single-handed squeeze that doesn't put any pressure on the work and leaves the other hand free to check the depth of cut. Or to track the workpiece. We have plunge bars for virtually every make of plunge router, old and new. And all makes of router will work with the wood rat. And that's frequently asked question number two. This is hand feeding. With the router fixed, the wood rat is working just like a router table, profiling, but the right way up. Frequent answer number three is, yes, it will take any length of work. The router table does have one advantage. It has gravity keeping the work on the plate. The wood rat, on the other hand, has this, the brush. Yes, it's a scrubbing brush on a stick. It's cammed in, in the cam clamp, and will give you whatever pressure you need to keep your work in place. Either a stiff upward push to hold it still, or a gentle push as you're sliding the work through. There's now no kickback, and the bristles keep the workpiece tight against the fence. It's not rocket science, but it works beautifully. Having the cam clamp directly under the cutter has other advantages. A board is set with a sharp pin and allowing you to spin a circle. This profiles a round table top for a spindle table. And there's more. Place a rounded board exactly under the cutter and you have a setup for pin routing. Here we're making the spindle table legs. This profile is for a cupboard door using a cope and stick joint. To hold the rails, we need the box, which can take a stack of pieces at 90 degrees to the machine. To be honest, there's really nothing that a router table does that you can't do on a wood rat. So, let's move on. Machine tenoners are prohibitively expensive for a small shop. The alternative is either yet another router jig that takes time to make and will, you betcha, never be used again however long it gathers dust in the workshop, or a lot of setting of fences with your bandsaw. As someone said to me, eight cuts and all of them wrong. But here, with the wood rat, we have four cuts, straight, square, and all of them perfect. The wood rat is a tenoner. Ordinarily, we have a one-inch depth of cut, but see that I've put in two raising plates, which will give an extra inch, and that means a two-inch depth of cut, which is fine for most cabinet-making work. Wood rat tenons are quite straightforward. You can make the whole gang. 
stub tenons, double tenons, twin tenons and double twin, as well as simple laps and rebates. We guess that there are well over 120 different named woodworking joints. And that's before adding those complex joints used in Japanese temples. Each has its proper place and function. And the majority are easy. Uh, they come straight out of the machine, like dovetailing. Others need a little handwork to clean up. That's a knuckle joint. Or uh, here, where you, you, you clean up the the rounded corners left by the bit, square them up. That's tusk tenon. And yet others are difficult and take a lot of care. Each time, the wood rat helps to make your joints square and exact fitting, which means that your carcasses or frames go together square and strong and true. Making all these joints becomes an end in itself. It can do, like stamp collecting. It's very tempting, for example, to make all those different kinds of dovetails, inlaid dovetails, and even invent new ones of your own. L let's make some furniture, starting with a simple bench three pieces of wood and two sliding dovetails. Sliding dovetail is a favourite joint, partly because it's very difficult to make by hand and also because it's accurate, quick and easy on the wood rat. Most joints start with the cutter zeroed on the top of the work. You can use the depthing foot of the router as it should be used. Uh, well, very nearly. We've taken off the turret because it just gets in the way. Wind up the gauge using the scale. Next, let's cut the picture of the cutter into a piece of acrylic. The socket is, of course, the size and shape and depth of the joint we are going to make which is dead useful information. The position of the cuts is given by the wood rat center liner, which gives the exact center of the cutter. Clamp the wood to the plate and you're set up for the dovetail housing. Move the work to the next position and cut. That does the two trenches. Let's look at the sliding tenon. We need to go back to the tenoning technique. We need to make a joint in the top of the uprights to fit the dovetail slot in the bench seat piece. We know that the joint must be the same size as the cutter. Its depth was given by the acrylic strip and we haven't changed it. At the beginning of all this, we had the east-west registration with the cutter and the mark and the two fixed fences. Now, we can move this around to at north-south if we have the cutter and the wood brought together. And we now need a picture of the wood and a picture of the cutter. There's the real cutter at the back of the real wood. We now use the actual workpiece to mark out the picture of the wood onto the guide rails. And we can use the socket in the acrylic to mark out the joint 
on the picture of the wood. Then we can use the same socket in the acrylic to stand in for the real cutter. The real cutter is at the back of the real wood there, and the cutter template is now at the back of the picture of the wood. Here comes Woodrat Minimum Technology Solution number two, Blue Tack. It's excellent stuff because you can stick the strip down exactly with it and it won't rattle loose, yet you can put it where you like and take it off again without marking the machine. Now, if we bring the cutter template forward to the picture of the joint here, we can cut the back side of the joint there. Now bring it to the front and we can cut the front side of the joint. See, we're going clockwise again to get a clean shoulder. And we can cut the stopped end with no trouble at all, as it's all in the same plane. Here's a nice thing. However the board is bowed, the joint will be dead straight. So there we have the sliding dovetail, which with a little practice will fit snug every time. Now this bench is just three boards joined together. It needs a little finessing now to make it into a piece of furniture. A chamfering bit like this will give you consistent chamfering to the edges. Here we are, a low bench in American oak. Shelving is done in the same way. It's so much quicker than a mortise and tenon joint and so much stronger than the dado joint. I suppose one of the most necessary actions in woodwork is to put a leg on a table. The usual way is with a mortise and tenon joint, but the wood rat can simply pull a sliding dovetail using the mitre box. Earlier, we made four tenons for a cupboard door. That's the top rail. That's the bottom rail, and we made the tenons themselves the same width, using the same method that we use for the sliding dovetail, we made it the same width as this 10 millimeter bit. Now we need a mortise for the tenons to go into. If the tenon is cut vertically, the mortise is usually cut horizontally. And for that, you need to make some kind of mortise rail or carriage to hold it. You make the mortise rail, using the wood rat, of course, and it allows you to put the work in horizontally in front of the cam clamps and the fences. And the rail can act as a router fence, so you can run your pieces through to make the grooves. The groove is to take the panel and the tenons. It goes exactly down the line of the tenons, and that locates its position. The same setting is then taken for the grooves in the styles. And when you cramp the styles to the mortise rail, you can drop the mortises in this exact line also,
That puts the tenon, which was made the same width as the bit, which is the same thickness as the groove, dead in line to drop into the mortise. And not by chance, the haunch on the tenon now fits into the groove to the right depth. And you can either square the mortises to fit the tenons or leave them rounded so that you can take the whole thing apart, gives a little room for that, or even you can uh, round off the tenons, which is sometimes useful. By the way, the raised and fielded panel can be made on the mortise rail too. Note the size of the thing that can be worked on below the plate and how carefully you can hold it. Use a half inch panel cut a bit and clamp in the panel and cut on the down cut to get a clean shoulder to the panel. And back on the up cut to get a fine finish to the face of the fielding. And if you've polished up the cutting edge, it should cut as clean as a whistle. Now the whole door goes together. And with any luck, it should just fit in the cupboard. Of course, we'll have to cut the horns off and pin the corners. You can then go on to sink the holes for the draw pegs and even make the dowels themselves in the timber that you are using for the door. The same hole, cut with the same cutter in a block of wood, can be put to service as a dowel pop. Any cutter placed exactly over the opening will make dowels any size and of any wood, so you're never stuck for a doweling that suits the type of wood you're using. Look, this was used to fill the bolt holes on my workbench, all done the same way. You can see that a very few simply made uh, accessories and add-ons can greatly extend the use of the wood rat. Most of these are shop made um, out of MDF and just blocks of wood, but there's one that we do sell and that's the mitre box. Actually, it will take the workpiece not just at 45 degrees, but at any angle from 0 to 90. It has a lot of uses, from mitering boards for secret dovetails to holding wood horizontal for dovetailing. This works in a similar way. We call it the sugar tong vice. It's a piece of scrap with a saw cut down it, and you cut a socket to take the workpiece, and then cam it into the cam lock to hold the wood. It'll take any kind of awkward shape, and it'll take rectangles too, but here it is taking a spindle for a spindle table. Most of the work so far has been about individual pieces and when you have a lot of similar pieces to make you can clamp them together in a stack and treat them like a single block. All the pieces will be cut in one pass, all exactly the same. You can cut as many as 40 box or draw sides in this way. This method can be used for dovetails or for finger joints or for batches of parts of toys.
Marking out is done on the first board or on the guide rails. A cursor on the router plate is set up against the picture of all the joints and the cutter is fixed at each position. This 3mm interval can be laid out on a PC. The cursor can be a scratch on a piece of acrylic or an actual cut made with the bit you are using. Move the cutter forward and we get the next cut and so on. And the cutter burrows in like a woodworm and you wonder if it will ever come out again. It should do. If everything's firm, there's no danger of breakout and it's very, very quick. As you can see, you can use any size of cutter, though I think that lots of narrow cuts are really classy. That's just my opinion.